Hello, TypeScript fans. My name is Benny, and in this session, we'll discuss the importance of platform considerations when building a TypeScript application. We'll set up a TypeScript compiler configuration, explore strict and watch modes, and fine-tune our VS Code editor to assist us with quick fixes. It is important to consider the environment in which JavaScript will run when building an application. JavaScript can run on various platforms, such as in a browser or on a server. Each platform has its own JavaScript engine, such as Google's V8 engine, Mozilla's SpiderMonkey engine, Chakra Core, previously maintained by Microsoft, and Apple's JavaScript Core. These engines implement the ECMA 262 standard, but the level of sophistication can differ depending on the platform. In order for our code to be compatible with a specific target, we need to configure our TypeScript compiler accordingly. To do this, we can use the npxtsc-init command to generate a configuration file. When opening the tsconfig.json file, we can see various options. To make it easier to understand, I will remove all the commented options. Looking at the target, we can see that our compiler will generate JavaScript code that adheres to the ECMAScript language specification released in 2016. I will cover the other available options in a separate episode on tsconfig. To begin writing TypeScript code, it is recommended to create a directory called src to signify that it contains the source code. For the file name, we can choose add.ts and store our add function within it. When strict type checking is enabled in our configuration, any plain JavaScript code in a TypeScript source code file will trigger a warning due to the lack of type annotations on function parameters. While disabling strict type checking will allow JavaScript code to pass as valid TypeScript code, it is advisable to avoid doing so as it defeats the purpose of using TypeScript for its strict type checking capabilities. Enabling strict mode will reveal errors in our source code file, but it also provides a quick fix option thanks to the TS language server. The TS language server gives our IDE information about the code so that our Visual Studio Code instance can render it and display helpful hints, which Microsoft calls IntelliSense. Just a heads up, try not to mix up the Visual Studio Code IntelliSense feature with the Microsoft Classic IntelliMouse. Trust me, one won't help you write code any better, but it might give you a better scrolling experience. All right, enough with the history lesson. Once we have properly written TypeScript code, we need to compile it to JavaScript, since Node.js can't run TypeScript natively. Compiling is a breeze. Just call npxtsc and you will get there. A JavaScript file will be generated alongside our TypeScript file. To execute it, simply run node, followed by the file path. Node src slash add .js. And there you have it. The result of 10 plus 100 is 110. So, what happens if we modify the numbers in our TypeScript code and run the node execution again? Well, the result won't change because we haven't recompiled the code. Keep in mind that in order to run our latest and greatest TypeScript code, we need to recompile it. It's something even experts can forget from time to time. Thankfully, the TypeScript team has implemented a watch mode to streamline development. With this feature, all we need to do is run the compiler with the dash dash watch option and it will automatically recompile our code whenever we make changes. This saves time and effort. And we can see the updated JavaScript code by simply modifying and saving our source code. In Node's ecosystem, it is typical to add a start script for running your application. We can achieve this by modifying the package.json file and adding a start property within the scripts section. Then we need to specify the command to start our program, which is node src slash add.jas. We should also prepend it with a compiler call to ensure that our JavaScript code is available. By default, every script has a pre and post script, so we can outsource our compiler call to the pre-start script and add a post start that says goodbye, just for fun. Additionally, it's worth mentioning that we don't need to add npx before package names when using npm scripts. It's done automatically by convention. To execute any script, we can use npm run followed by the script's name, such as npm run test. This will output the defined text in the corresponding section. For frequently used script names like start and test, we can directly use npm start and npm test without adding run. 
However, if we've defined custom script names, it's best to use the extended command to execute them. Let me stress the importance of using binaries from the node modules directory. There are a lot of tutorials that tell you to install TypeScript globally using npm install dash dash global TypeScript. To demonstrate the issues that can arise from this approach, I'll install TypeScript version 4 globally. If we install TypeScript globally, we can use the tsc command without npx. However, this can cause issues because the global version may not match the version specified in our project. As a result, we may compile our TypeScript code using the global version, but encounter issues when our code is deployed to production and runs with the locally bundled version of TypeScript. Let me give you an example. With TypeScript version 4, I can use the imports not used as values compiler option, and the code will compile without any issues. However, when I try to compile the same code with the locally available TypeScript version 5 using npx tsc, it crashes. To avoid such confusion, it's best to remove the globally installed version by running npm uninstall dash dash global TypeScript. If we open our TypeScript source code in VS Code, we can check the TypeScript version being used for code highlighting in the IDE's status bar. VS Code comes with its own version of TypeScript, which is why we don't see any warning in our TS config about an unsupported property in TS5, as VS Code uses TS 4.9.5. If we choose to use our workspace version instead, we'll see the configuration problem. The TypeScript version used for syntax highlighting in VS Code will be saved in a settings.json file located in the .vs code directory. All right, now that we've got our VS code configuration dialed in, it's time to put our newfound knowledge to the test. What's the name of the specification that standardizes JavaScript? Where are TypeScript's compiler configurations saved? Why should you enable TypeScript's strict mode? How can you compile TypeScript to JavaScript? What is the purpose of TypeScript's watch mode? What issues can arise from installing TypeScript globally? If you need a quick refresher to find the correct answer, simply replay this video at the chapter that corresponds to the question. I will also share the source code with you on my GitHub repository on github.com slash TypeScript TV slash my project. With that being said, it's a good idea to create a git in your file at this point to exclude the node underscore modules directory and any plain JavaScript files. These files are either downloaded or generated and don't belong in our repository. In the next video, we will learn about the type system of TypeScript, so be prepared to level up.